Hey folks, welcome back. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, so this presentation has a few different things in going on. There's some uh, helicopter things from here in LA. There's some stuff from Belfast uh, and some stuff that I found online. And uh, one thing from the mid seventies, which you know is pretty cool to get older footage with something that's pretty interesting in it. And then also um, the last presentation I did uh, pertain to the bridge collapse in Vietnam from September 9th of this year. And so, you know, it's not rocket science, it's just basic logic to go and see what you find with other similar scenarios, other bridge collapses and things like that. So there's, uh, you know, I did a little research and uh, found some things, so I'm sharing those as well. So uh, hope you enjoy it. And like I always say, please uh, comment and share these presentations with other people you think might enjoy them um, or have some input. And we'll talk to you on the other side. Thank you. All right, so this is from MB in Belfast. Thanks, MB. Uh, this is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's you know goes from the bottom right to the top left, and it seems to kind of change presentation periodically. This is what I mean by this. I'm pausing it right here. In the bottom right, it's dark. Um, and then it hops like one frame, and it's still dark, but a little lighter. And then it moves through, and it's not dark anymore. In here, we pause it again. In the top left corner, it's not dark, but it's not super light either. It's sort of in between. So yeah, I don't know what this is, but it seems like uh, MB has some interesting stuff going on in the sky in Belfast. So um, thanks for sharing this. All right, so I have no clue what this is. Maybe it's prosaic, maybe it isn't. The reason I'm including it, though, and the reason I like it is because it's smaller on the way down and bigger on the way up, which kind of presents itself in my mind as sort of a corkscrew motion, which I think is kind of cool. So I was watching this video uh, on the YouTube channel, Universe Inside You, and it was about suppressed technologies. And uh, this was about fuel. Uh, fuel sources for automobiles, and I saw this. So this is clearly old footage. Um, I'm trusting that it was from 1977, but either way, this thing comes up from the bottom left and then makes an impossibly fast, hard turn left, uh, which seems to basically just be at odds with physics but yeah there's not a tremendous amount to say about this it's cool looking and i don't know what to make of it but yeah This is an interesting one because this thing is basically hovering in space and it has no means of propulsion or any basis for maintaining altitude, in my opinion. And I'm saying it's hovering because compare its location to the cloud right there and then let it roll and then pause it again here. And look, it's still at the same place in the cloud. And that's why I say it's hovering.
And I could see how somebody might say, oh, that's a balloon. But the problem is I've captured so many of these. There aren't just black balloons hovering in Los Angeles and then, you know, just chilling near helicopters like this. All right, so we're transitioning now to this whole, like, bridge situation. And you might recognize this footage from something I featured in the last presentation. Um, so, yeah, so that's a reminder. Now check this out. This is a controlled demolition. And this thing is supposed to fall down to our right, but there's a problem. It starts to fall down to the right, but then eventually uh, goes the opposite direction. And... The footage we're going to focus on is in the sky above those white structures to the left. So more specifically, you see the cranes above those structures, and then you see that cloud above the cranes, and that's where we're going to focus. So something starts moving here from right to left, and we're going to pause it right here. Uh, looks similar to what MB sent, right? Um, and then it flutters off. Uh, to the left off screen and this is it a little more closely can't really tell what it is but it's certainly something uh moving from right to left and i can understand someone saying it's debris maybe i don't know maybe it is i mean in my view it doesn't move like debris but whatever uh, it gets more interesting though check this out right after that happens this pops up kind of from left to right is what it looks like but it goes so quickly it's tough to see and you'll see it in real time but yeah that thing shoots by and then all of a sudden all of this pops up at once um and i don't know what to make of it but here it is in real speed and then this happens as if that wasn't weird enough all of these things just appear and then sort of float and then disappear. And here that is closer. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know, <laughs> it's a weird one. But as these things disappear, watch how this plays out. Um, they, it, this thing on the left sort of just turns into an orb sort of-ish. And then look at how it leaves. It decides to like split up into a few things before it departs. So at the beginning um, of the discussion of this capture, I said we're gonna focus on the left side in the sky. That wasn't entirely true, look at this. See this orb? Look where this orb is. Now knowing that that's there, you should go back and check out this capture and you'll see that this thing just hovers up there for a while and then does its own little thing. Yeah. Okay, so here's another bridge collapse. Now this footage is obviously in slow motion and it pans left and I kind of just chopped what's over there because it's just people. And then uh, the footage pans back to the right and what it captures when it's panning back to the right is the focus of this right here. Yeah, so whatever this thing is, like does this Z-shaped route at this ridiculous rate of speed and just like how you change direction that quickly is beyond me. I don't know. It's just mind-boggling to me, the speed and the performance ability. And obviously, this isn't even addressing the question of why is this here at a bridge collapse. So this is a still image of another you know, structural issue with the bridge. And we're going to focus again on the top left as it happens. Uh, it looks like there's some buoys, 
uh, in the water and there's a dark one near the column uh, on the top left and that's uh, where we're going to be focusing. So there's the dark object in the water and then these show up. I mean, hey, maybe these are just camera artifacts, but, you know, what are the odds of these camera artifacts just popping in and out at these bridge collapses and these other calamities? Something else I want to point out before we move on is look at that column on the left. Something is there too. So the last thing I want to focus on with this is this primary, you know, larger uh, object here that comes into frame. And what I noticed about this is this sort of notch toward the left side of it. And I felt like it looked similar to this, which also has a notch on the left side of it. And this is from a capture from a SpaceX camera in space. Um, and when I showed this, I commented then about that notch. Um, and that's what the close-up was. And I compared it to the Comburgas UFO still, which is right there. And now that thing looks very similar to this, which is a still from this most recent bridge collapse footage. Obviously, I'm not saying they're the same thing, but I'm just sharing my observation that they seem to be very similar looking. All right, so we're going to wrap up the presentation with this because it's interesting and it's a little lighter than bridge collapses. Um, you see that thing on the left. And what's interesting about this is this is an example of rotor speed and frame rate matching up. Look at this. Now, if you go through and scrub, you'll see that that black thing toward the left is in multiple frames. It definitely is moving very fast and buzzing this helicopter. But to me, the bigger story with this footage is, you know, the frame rate rotor speed um, alignment because you don't see that very often it's pretty cool all right folks well there you have it um yeah hope you enjoyed it it was a little bit of a different one right so uh two things first i don't know what to make of you know these anomalies surrounding tragedies and calamities i mean i don't know but i i, I just have trouble thinking that it's coincidental or the alternative would be is that they're everywhere all the time and that's possible and that actually leads me to my second thought which is that why are we able to see these things now i don't personally think uh that these things are just arriving i think it's a confluence of two factors the first is that our technology has gotten to the point where it's allowing us to see things that we couldn't previously um, much like uh, a microscope allows us to see the microbial world that we didn't know existed previously. That's the first factor. I believe the second factor is the fact that the eyes tend not to see what the mind doesn't know. And what I'm saying when I say that is that if you have a mental awareness or openness to something being um, in existence, when you do see it, it will register with you. Uh, on the other hand, if you're closed off or you're unaware of something mentally, uh, your eyes might see it, but it just may not mentally register with you. And so like if you say, if you go on a hike, you take a trail and um, it's new to you and the environment's new to you and you see a sign that says, beware of rattlesnakes, now that's in your mental awareness. And then when you happen to see one, you'll probably be better able to spot it because you're mentally aware of it, of the potential or the possibility versus a trail that has no signage at all, uh, your eyes might be less likely to register the rattlesnake. So that's kind of what I mean by that. And so I think the confluence of our technology and then a mental awareness um, of the potential 
uh, kind of coalesce to allow us to see these things uh, more often than we used to, at least for me. Um, so anyway, hope you enjoyed this presentation. And like I always say, feel free to comment and so we can keep the dialogue going and uh, share these presentations with other people you think might enjoy them or have some input. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.